doing, church? Tonight's going to be a little different. Um, so for everyone online and here, it's an honor to be here. But most of our church is away because of the women's retreat we're having. So most of our team, most of our people. So we were just thinking with our team here, the people left behind, that we're just going to have a nice little intimate time of worship and we'll just see where we go from there. Just give me two seconds to plug myself in. Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor. Just right where you are, begin to have a conversation with God and tell him how much you love him, tell him exactly what you're expecting to get from tonight. Just begin to open up your heart and have a conversation. Begin to put your burdens at his feet. Begin to put whatever hurts you, whatever breaks you. In God's presence. And the cool part about that is that not only can he take it, but he wants to take it. Jesus, we lay it all at your feet. We give you full control, full authority, full power, not only tonight, but in our whole lives. Let us worship like we've never worshiped. Let us look for your face like we've never looked for your face before. Spirit of the Lord 
is here. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love, your love. So full of faith that a miracle can happen now. A miracle can happen now for the Spirit of the Lord is here. Here. A miracle 
Just begin to declare this over your life. A miracle. A miracle can happen now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around. For the Spirit. Is he? Father, we worship you. Thank you because we don't need much to enter your presence. We don't need much to encounter heaven. So, Father, just as we are and just where we're at, God, we want to put our reality in your hands. We want to put our life in your hands. We want to keep looking for your presence. We want to dive deep into what you have for us. So Father, we keep worshiping your name. And right now we declare the name of Jesus over every single home, over every single reality, over every single struggle, knowing and believing that the name of Jesus has all the power, all the authority, 
And not the last word in what happens, but the only word of authority in our lives. So God, we look for you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. you feel comfortable, we can declare this. In the name of Jesus, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, 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 to break every chain. Come on, declare it. To break every chain, to break every chain. Break every chain to 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 break every chain there is power in the name of Jesus there is power There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain. looking for God, for His presence. Father, we thank You. trying to get into God's presence. Stop, never stop. 
never stop working. He never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see you working. Even when I don't feel you working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see you working. Feel you working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. We make her promise keeping light in the darkness. My God, who you are. Come on, let's declare this. We make her miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. God is who you are. Come on, let's sing that one more time. We make her. We make her miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. 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 That is who you that is who you are. Oh. Come on, just where you are, just begin to enjoy God's presence. And right where I just invite you to just close your eyes and have a conversation with Him. God, we thank you because you're in this place. And everything that we're singing, not only is it true, but God, we know that you're faithful to your word. So regardless of our reality, regardless of what our lives might be saying right now, we can sing this with a full heart full of conviction, God, that even if I don't see you move, even if I don't feel you move, God, you are doing something. So even if we don't understand or even like what's happening in our lives, what's happening in our cities, in our countries, God, we, we want to have hearts full of faith that you're doing something. Even if I don't understand it, even if I don't see it, even if I don't feel it. Because God, you make a way where there's no way. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. That is who you are. We make a Light in the darkness, that is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, 
That's who you've always been. That's who you'll be. Oh, oh we worship you. We raise up your name. That is who you are. So, God, we put tonight in your hands. God, we declare that you're in this place. It's not a coincidence that every single one of us are in this place and we've made our way here. Therefore, you have something special for us. So speak to us. We put these next couple minutes in your hands. And God, we just want to see you move. You guys here, hi to everyone online. Today, it's kind of weird. So everyone's away in women's retreat, so I'm all plugged in. Normally I do this every Sunday. Can you take this? So today's going to be different um, because you guys can sit down. Say what's up to someone that's close to you. You're, if you're home, so you're probably sitting down. Um, and I'm really excited. A lot of people have hit me up on this subject that we've been touching. I'm not a big fan of singing and then having to speak, but it's going to be fun. So, Father, we throw this night into your hands. We throw these next couple minutes into your hands, God. I pray that you speak through me, that every single word that comes out of my mouth comes straight from your heart. God, do what only you know how to do. Do what only you can do. We just take one message and divide it into hundreds, thousands, millions of little pieces and deposit it into every single heart in a unique way, in a personalized way, in an intimate way. So God, speak to every single one of us Starting with myself, because God knows I need it. We want to put these next minutes in your hands. I pray that you open up every single heart that's here, that's home listening. And I just ask you, Father, do what only you can do. In your name we pray. Amen. And amen. Um, if you've been coming for the last couple weeks... You know that we've been doing a little series, which I decided to title, um, What is Love, Baby, Don't Hurt Me? If you were here the first week, uh, you heard my story about um, me and my best friend's failed attempt of forming a boy band, um, and he's actually sitting right there, so afterwards, you can fact check me with him, and you'll notice that it is really awkward to have a really tall white guy and a short brown guy be a boy band, so we had to control all delete that idea because it just wasn't going to work. Um, so we're going to continue the thought, and obviously if you've been following, you know that we're talking and, and we're camping on the scriptures found in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 4, and we're still doing the whole, what is love, baby don't hurt me, but today is the first things first edition. Um, and as I was writing all my thoughts down, and I was actually in Orlando yesterday, drove back down this morning, or this afternoon, not really sure, but um, as I was coming down, I just had time to think, and obviously this chunk of scripture has been sitting in my heart, in my mind for a couple weeks now, and I've been thinking about it a lot, I've been, um, like the Bible says, meditating a lot about it, and as, as I hit this little... Um, piece that we're going to tackle right now, and we're going to read it in a second. I, I just couldn't stop thinking about this idea of first things first. And, and I know a lot of you and a lot of you watching online, um, someone said that to you before. Hey, first things first. First things first. 
And if anyone's ever said that to you, you know you're skipping steps. You know you're dropping the ball in one way or another. You know you're doing things wrong somehow. If someone has to pull you aside and say, hey, buddy, first things first, means that, that not, not only your actions are out of line, but your heart is out of line, your mind is out of line, and you need to get put back into place. Someone says, hey, first things first. What, what, what does that mean? And I think to myself, like, the hundreds of thousands of millions of times my parents have had to say that to me while growing up. Um, because, yes, I, I love to skip steps. It, it was just a thing you did. It was like, all right, cool. Um, I want to drive. Um, so I'm just going to jump on the uh, driver's seat. And I'm 12 years old. So my dad's like, hey, buddy, first things first. You need to be old enough to drive. I wanted a girlfriend. Funny story. Um, I'm not going to get into it because then I'm going to end up humiliating myself and my best friend right here uh, because we decided it was time to have girlfriends and it just backfired. First things first. I wish someone would have sat me down and said, hey, buddy, first things first. Get to know yourself. Get to love yourself. Get to grow into who God's created you to be and be a, a, a sustainable human emotionally so that then you can sustain somebody else emotionally. And there's so many areas in life, and I'm probably saying all these things, and you're probably sitting there thinking like, oh, yeah, you know, he's right. There's all these different areas in my life where I, I need to reorganize them for them to succeed. Because the truth is, if we do not organize ourselves, if we do not go from point A to point B, and we go from point A to D, there's something wrong. That the balance is off. And when the balance is off, things fall. So you're probably sitting there like, what does that have to do with what we've been talking about? What is love? Da, da, da. Baby, don't hurt me. So if you have your Bibles, let's dive straight into 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 4. And I'm reading out of the message translation. And I would love it if the people that come here, man, if you just brought physical Bibles so you could write on them, throw your notes, throw your thoughts. But I love this. Verse 1. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day. And if I have faith to say to the mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, what I do, I am bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. And this is from the message translation. So in the NIV, you would see love is patient. Love cares more for others than for self. Love is kind. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. And these next couple ones I read is what we're going to camp on today. Love doesn't have, doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't strut. A lot of you are probably sitting there like, what does that mean? Don't worry, we're going to dive straight into the, um, the fountain of all knowledge when it comes to vocabulary, which is the dictionary. Um, and then the last one, doesn't have a swelled head. In other words, we're saying love does not envy, it does not boast, and it is not proud. Love does not envy, love does not boast, it is not proud. And as I was thinking of all these things, obviously I come to the tension that's presented in the subject that we're talking about, that when, when we love somebody, there's two sides to our love. There's the side of, okay, am I loving for what I can get? Am I loving someone for what I can get from this situation? Or am I loving someone from what I can give to this person? Am I in this relationship for what I can give? Am I in this relationship for how I can build this person? Or am I in this relationship just out of selfishness, out of wanting to get something out of this person? And hey, if you're honest, you know there's been tons of times that you see somebody and you're like, I, I could really move forward in life if I got closer to that person. I, I could be so much better if I got closer to that, to that person. 
And if we're honest with ourselves, there's a lot of relationships that we have that really aren't about how we can build others, but more about what we can do to build ourselves through others. And I love that because biblically, that is not love. And I love being a youth pastor because I get to talk to a, young, a bunch of young people, people that are extremely confused on what it is to love and what love actually is. So if you talk to 99% of young people, a relationship, having a, a, a sentimental relationship, dating someone, it's 100% not about what they can give. Never. I, I've never had a situation where I sit with a young person and they're like, I, I love this person. I love this girl. I just want to serve her. Victor. I've never sat down with a young person or a young girl and she's like, ah, Pablo, I love this guy. I just want to encourage him and make him better. Like, no, never. Our society has tainted love and it's turned it into what can I get from this? How can I be more because of this rather than how can I build through this? How can I, how can I love people through their mess? How can I love people through their hardship? How can I love people through their, their day-to-day? And, and if we're honest, people suck. You want to know how I know people suck? Because I suck. Right? We're all humans. We all have our dark side. We all have this stuff inside that we're dealing with. So I, I don't understand when in, in human history having a relationship with God turned from, hey, I'm a piece of art designed by God, but I'm still a work in progress. I'm still moving forward. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I'm still getting better. I don't know where it turned from that to, oh, you're a Christian now, so you're perfect. So now we feel like, oh, if I believe in Jesus, if I follow Jesus, if I tell people that I follow Jesus, I need to have this mask, this facade that says, hey, I, I got it all together. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. Because if you have it all together, then who's going to love you through it? Who's going to love you in your mess? Who's going to love you Monday mornings when you look like trash? Or maybe Tuesday mornings isn't your day. Or maybe Wednesday mornings. Like, who's going to love you through it if, if, if you're perfect? And that's why I love this chunk of scripture because it gives us a detailed description of what love actually looks like. And if we were to put this description of love next to the description of love that society gives us, you'd, we'd notice that we're on two completely different playing fields. Like I was telling you in the tension, if we look at what the world tells us love is, is all about me. What I feel. What I want. Your words made me feel this. I, I think this. I, I, I feel feel it's all me me my heart my feelings my emotions and I love that we get to dive into the scriptures and see that it, it, it love, love is something we give and I love it because the Bible says that God is love so every time, any time, no matter where you are, how old you are, if you have ever experienced love in a relationship with anybody, you've experienced God's presence. So if you're a parent and, and you feel that love for your kids, that, that thing that you feel is God's presence between you and them. If you feel that for your spouse, it's God's presence just saying, hey, I'm here. If you, hopefully, if you feel love for yourself, that's God saying, hey, I'm here in the bathroom with you. You're about to get in the shower and you're kind of checking yourself out. You know, anytime you felt love, it is, God is there. So this description of love that we've been diving into has nothing to do with 
what comes in, but everything to do with what comes out. So, let's get right into it. Today we're going to touch three different um, descriptions of what love is and isn't. So number one, if you're taking notes, um, and if you're home, if you're not taking notes, um, our head host, Edwin, he is judging you. So you might get a DM by an account, Edwin123, that is him. He is judging you. But if you're taking notes, um, the first thing I want to talk about is, or the way I wrote it down is, does not envy. Love does not envy. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm just going to let it sink in. Love does not envy. And like I've done it every week, and like I'll probably do it every week until we finish this, we're going to dive into the source of knowledge called the dictionary and to see what it says. Envy. This one's going to hurt. Envy, a feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or luck. That last one actually made me laugh. Have you ever been jealous of someone's luck? Lately, I've been playing a lot of golf. I, I, I need to have a moment of where I can heal my heart towards my best friend because he got me into golf. And if any of you know anything about golf or like to golf, and if you're watching at home and you know anything about golf and you have some tips, send them my way. I definitely need them. But one thing I've noticed about golf is um, you, you spend good money to suck. Right? You, you spend good money to suck. I didn't know he was going to be here, so I'm just going to flame you since you are. I was going to say this anyways. I get so jealous of my best friend, Austin, because even when he messes up, it goes straight. <laughs> so we'll be setting up. And obviously, we've been best friends since second grade, so we talk tons of trash. We're playing. We don't even talk to each other. Like Everything is a competition. God forbid I'm having a bad day. He's on me. And look, I'll say it on camera, I subconsciously cheat. It's out there. So we'll finish a hole, and he's like, how many did you get? And I'm like, one, two, uh, four. No, you didn't. I'm like, dude, one, and I, like, trace what my ball did. I'm like, one, two, three, four. And he's like, no, 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 bro. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. But then he goes up and, like, literally, you can ask him when we finish. Even when he messes up, it goes towards the hole. And so I, I was reading this verse, and I'm like, that is hilarious. Not this verse, this description. If you think about it, we're, we're jealous of people's luck all the time. And, and in the... In church, we, we don't call it luck. We call it favor. Favor ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. But I love what we find in the scriptures in Proverbs 14, verse 30. And let this, this one sink in because this one's going to hurt. Proverbs 14, verse 30. A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh. Envy makes the bones rot. A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. Now you're probably thinking, how does this even connect to love? 
Because envy, jealousy are two completely different things. When, when you put them on the same spectrum as love, you're like, wait a second, what do you mean love, envy, love, jealousy? And as I was writing all this down and just kind of praying on this, it, it kind of broke my heart to realize that most loving relationships are prisoners of jealousy. Most couples are prisoners of jealousy in one way or another. Most couples are literally in, in chains and they're not able to love their partner, their spouse adequately, wholeheartedly just because there's this thing, jealousy, just creeping on them. And if you've ever felt jealousy or if you've ever had envy in your heart, you know this rots you out. This literally eats you from the inside out and you don't even know how to get rid of it. You're like, oh, I really do wish I could want the best for this person. But man, I want the best for me. That, that's when envy hits. So if you want to love adequately and if you want to love wholeheartedly and you want a practical tip on getting rid of envy if you're taking notes write this down and the bible says it and i love it because it's so practical you need to pray for your enemies and obviously you're probably sitting there and you're like man i don't really have any enemies i work at Publix. Or I, I don't really have any, any enemies. I'm, I'm in college. And basically what this is saying is pray, pray for those people that are really hard to love, to not use more extreme language. Pray for them. I promise you it's really hard to stay bitter, to stay jealous when you bless somebody, when you invite the presence of God to be on that person. A tranquil heart gives life to, to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. Next one. Love does not boast. And we're going to camp on this one for a little bit. And if someone could find Coco to come play the keys, make me sound extremely spiritual, that'd be great because we're going to touch some scriptures in here. But I love this. Love does not boast. This is what the dictionary says about boasting. It's a verb. It's talk with excessive pride and self-satisfaction about one's achievements, possessions, or abilities. I'm going to read that again. Boasting is a verb. And it's when someone, when you talk with excessive pride and self-satisfaction about one's achievements, possessions, or abilities. Have you ever met someone that only talks about themselves? You laughed a little too loud, bro. Is he sitting next to you? Those people, it's like you want to do the impossible to shut them up. You, those are the type of people that you see them walk into a room and you're like, Jesus, take them or I will send them to your presence. I will lay holy hands and just baptize them for 15 minutes. L love, love can't be in the conversation if you're just talking about yourself. Love can't be in the conversation if you're just throwing flowers on yourself. And I love this because the way to get rid of this, the, the way to cut this in your life, is to make sure that every time you open up your mouth, you're building the people around you. 
You, you want to learn how to effectively and wholeheartedly love those people around you? Make sure that every single time someone encounters you, they walk away better because they encountered you. Make sure that every single time you encounter someone, they walk away encouraged because they encountered you. Make sure you, every single time you encounter someone, they walk away full of life because they encounter you. Make sure people want to bump into you. Or, or are people bumping into you and walking away depressed? Or are people walking away feeling lonely? Are people walking away feeling insecure? And I want you to think about that. As you're sitting there hearing me, like, and even if you're home sitting in your living room, in your bedroom, wherever it is you are, think about that. Like, how do people leave after encountering you? Are people better for it? And once again, I love that this is the way God decides to describe love is, hey, it's not about what you get, it's about what you give. Are you building people? Or do you think the only way to receive love, and hear me on this one, do you think that the only way to receive love is if you talk about what you are, who you are, what you have, just because you feel like you're not enough? And as I was thinking about this, love does not boast. I was thinking of, like, all right, what, what's, what, what's the other side of that? And I, I think it's humility. And I was talking to my youth leaders a couple weeks ago about this subject. And I, I realized I really dislike to not say hate because I think that's a really strong word. Um, I, I really dislike people that have fake humility. And if you're sitting there, you're like, all right, like, what is fake humility, Pablo? Fake humility is when you do stuff to be recognized, to be acknowledged. And then the moment you get recognized or acknowledged for doing that, you're like, oh, it was nothing. <laughs> My car's always that clean. Oh, dude, that was nothing. It was just 20 bucks. Slipped out of my pocket into the homeless man's hands. That's fake humility. People that constantly do stuff with the intentions of being noticed, and then when they are, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. But when I think of what real humility is, I, I, I think real humility is people that know who they are, that know their identity, and that they don't have the need to tear themselves down to be like, oh, no, 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 no. But hear me, hear me out on this one. It's not people that feel like they need to tear themselves down. Real humility is knowing who you are, who God created you to be, so that the people around you can be lifted up. So that you can grab the people around you and say, hey, you know what, like, this is who God created me to be, and I'm not going to... Uh, bow down or bring myself down so that there's not an, like attention on me or, or whatnot. Like, no, you need to know who God created you to be. You need to know what gifts God gave you. You need to know what God placed inside of you so that you can look around, find people and say, hey, you know what? You need to be better. You need to grab people, put them up, make sure people are better because of you. So what's coming out of your mouth? Love does not boast. And I love what it says in Proverbs 27, verse 2, out of the ESV translation. Let another praise you, and not your own mouth. A stranger, and not your own lips. I think it's hilarious that the Bible has to touch these subjects because God knows how we are, how we love to talk about ourselves. Practical tip, if, you, if you're not very social and you struggle with social skills talk to people just ask questions i promise you the moment you ask a question about something that the other person is passionate about they will not shut up we love talking about ourselves let another praise you 
and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. In James chapter 3, verse 5, once again out of the ESV translation, it says, So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. What's coming out of your mouth? What are you speaking over people? What are you, what are you deciding to believe for? What, what are you speaking into existence? Like what, what words are coming out? What are you declaring over your everyday life? What are you declaring over your family, your job, your future? Oh, this sucks. This is going to be the worst week ever. No, this is going to be the best week ever. Oh, my, my husband, my wife, this, that, and this. No, speak life, build people. Build people, love people. And the last one, just to wrap this up, is love is not proud. Love is not proud. So pride in the dictionary, so we can have a clear understanding of what we're talking about. A feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements, the achievements of those whom one is close to or associated to, or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. I'm going to read that one more time. A feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements, the achievements of those with whom one is closely associated with, or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. There's so many verses in the Bible that talk about pride and, and how pride is literally poison that sets inside of us to rot our soul out just like envy is. But pride, pride has something different. Pride is almost like this bandage that you decide to use over your eyes. And you use to ignore reality and live the reality that's in your mind. walk around with your head up high I'm the man when deep inside you know you're not stomp on people cut people down just to make yourself feel higher pride is this thing that doesn't let us see what's actually there and I love that this is something parallel to love because I wonder how many relationships we're in where we're just covering our eyes denying the truth of the relationship of what's actually happening and we're cutting people down maybe you're cutting your wife down your husband down your brother your sister your friend just to make yourself feel higher, feel better, feel like you're more than you actually are. Proverbs 11, verse 2. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. Proverbs 18, 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction in a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 29, 23, one's pride will bring, one's pride will bring him low, but he who is low in spirit will obtain honor. Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance in the way of evil. A perverted speech, which I hate. James 4, verse 6, 
And I love this one. James 4, verse 6. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You, you can't receive what God has for you if you think it's all about you. You, you, you need to acknowledge that you need God, that you need him, that you need people, that you need people's love, that you need people's relationship, that, that we need each other to move forward, to grow, to build. Pride doesn't let you do that. And I love that, but he gives grace to the humble. And like I was telling you, humility is just knowing who you are. Hey, maybe you're not perfect. You're not Shoot, I'm not. So it's not faking perfection. It's knowing who you are and knowing that God gives grace. God gives grace, so we give grace. Knowing that people aren't perfect around us, so we love them through their mistakes. Hey, I love you. Man, you hurt me, but I love you. And that being said, it doesn't mean that we need to be these victims in every relationship that we're in. No, you, you can love people and cut them. And I want to leave you guys with this phrase that my mom hit me once, hit me with once, and it completely changed my life and it changed the way I carry myself in every relationship that I have. And she looked at me in the eyes because I was complaining about someone and she said, hey, Pablo, the hardest people to love are the ones that need it the most. The hardest people to love are the ones that need it the most. So my question to you is, where is there envy in your heart? Towards people, towards situations, maybe even towards yourself. Where are your words getting in the way? Where are you boasting too much? Where are you talking too much about yourself? Where, where, where are you robbing yourself from the ability to love effectively and wholeheartedly? And the last one, where, where? Where are you blinding yourself with pride and not allowing yourself to see what's actually around you, who's actually around you, what is actually around you so that you can love it effectively and I love this because the Bible says that you and I are ambassadors of Christ in other words everywhere we go we, we are the embassy of heaven on earth so coming back to where we started if we're able to love effectively if we're able to carry these things into our everyday life and, and, and bring love into every situation, into every person, into every moment, we're, we're carrying God's presence into over every person, into the relationship with every moment, with every situation. And I love it because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So regardless of how hard that relationship might be, if there is love, God is there. So things need to change. People will change. If you're in this situation and you decide to speak life over it and love enters the situation, hey, it, it, something's going to happen because God is in there. And, and if you choose to bring that love inside because I love it because the first two things that we talked about are external things like envy being jealous like 
where we're jealous about stuff, about conversations. We, we boast, we talk about ourselves. But man, pride is something that sits in our heart. So if, if you let Jesus step deep into your soul, deep into your heart, and, and allow him to do what only he can do, I promise you that loving people loving things, loving places, and being the ambassadors of heaven on earth turns from being very hard, borderline impossible, to something natural. We begin to look like God. We begin to act like God. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for these minutes that you give us to talk about some truths that are in your word. Thank you for this map that you give us on what love looks like, what love should sound like, what love should look like, even what love should feel like. I pray that we can take all these things week by week and, and not only hear them and be inspired by, by them, but hear them and, and apply them. Hear them and be able to effectively love people, things, and stuff around us and, and wholeheartedly love things, people, and just be able to be invested and really be able to introduce you to everything that we do. And right there where you are, I would love it if you just kind of put those things that break your heart into God's hands and say, hey, these are the things that are stopping me from loving. These are the things that are hindering me from loving. And maybe you're sitting there and you're in your living room, you're in your room, you're in your kitchen, or maybe you're in here and you know something's stopping you, something's hindering you from loving, and you just don't know what it is. Just take two seconds and say, hey, Holy Spirit, show me. Speak to me. Tell me what are those things that are stopping me. Because maybe it's something that broke your heart a long time ago. So you're like, hey, Holy Spirit, remind me. What are these things stopping me, slowing me down, pulling me back, making me unable to love? Because God is love. And he designed it for us not only to give it, but to fully enjoy life. To fully taste life. To fully see life. To fully participate in this experience that he's created for us. That starts when we're born. And only just grows from there one day will be an eternity in the presence of love so God I pray that you take this word and deposit it deep in our hearts and let it do what only you can do just really put that in that place where we store things that in the moments where we need it the most, it can just come out. Help us. Help us be able to really want the best for people and take envy and just pull it out of our heart from the root and let us really be able to want the best for people. To, to cheer for people when they win, to, to really just desire the best for everyone that surrounds us. 
Let us be able to speak life into people, to speak life into our family, into our parents, into our friends, our siblings, even into people we don't know. Because we choose to use the words in our mouth to build and not destroy. And help us take off every single bandage that might be covering our eyes in different areas, in different relationships, in different situations. That's not allowing us to see reality how it actually is. God, we love you.